Hi there smartphone fans, this is Stephen Fox again. Thank you for coming back for an honest smartphone review. And today I have for you the Ulefone Armor 2. Vastly improved from its predecessor, this is a rugged waterproof phone that's not only good to use as a phone, but with capable cameras and also fine for gaming. And this is the device itself. This has quite a few features like an SOS button, Volume rockers are separate. It's a very tough rubber body on the outside with a metal rim on the sides. And you do have a separate camera button, a PTT button and the on and off switch are also separate. It also comes with a fingerprint scanner, embedded NFC chip and all, a bunch of other things that uh, I'll get to a bit later. Uh, if wondering if this phone is like rugged and it's too big for you, I'll tell you it's not. It's not like one of those uh, huge devices, not like the K10,000 Pro. So this is for a man, a very good size phone, and it is 100% waterproof. If you haven't checked my initial unboxing, I suggest to check it out. I do another water test there, but the phone is waterproof 100%. I've been getting it wet every day since I got it. No pun intended. Um, yeah, this didn't. So about the Ulefone Armor 2, it's a phone that's so feature packed and just so many things but first the build quality on this is great, it doesn't wobble, it doesn't come close to even bending under severe pressure so this is a very very tough phone, very well built device that will survive almost any conditions and I just wanted to let you know again this phone, this supports all the 4G LTE bands that you need so this phone will work in the United States, Canada everywhere in Asia and in Europe as well. The call quality on this rugged device is absolutely amazing. Um, I've never had a better, better rugged phone for talking on it uh, since some of them have a problem with this because the microphone is too far embedded in the device but this is not the case here and with the BV8000 Pro the NFC wasn't working. The Ulefon Armor 2's NFC works like a charm. I've tested it on a few tanks but um, I'm not a guy who would use Android Pay, if that's your thing then you can use it but I don't think it's safe enough to put my credit card in my phone. Um, and the phone also supports tablets up to wake as well as you know with the fingerprint scanner. Now to all those features, um, all those sensors in the phone inside uh, are put to good use. You can use compass, you can measure your heart rate. This is a very very fine device for the outdoor lover, for the one who likes the extreme lifestyle and for anyone who just breaks your, their phone too often. Yes, I'm talking to most of you out there. You do break your phones too often, admit that. And um, it's a very very tough build device and you also can tell that it will survive a drop because of the rubber on the side. It's far better than doing it all metal since the rubber absorbs the shock and does not damage the internals of the device. Um, it also comes with an SOS button which you can program uh, and click and if you're ever in danger it will by your command pressing the button call or send an SMS to a number you have uh, installed in it and they will notify the party with your coordinates and that you're in danger. So again a lovely lovely feature for those who love the extreme lifestyle and uh, out there in the woods for days or in the mountains and you do get also the earthquake and tsunami alert uh, feature on this phone for those of you who live in dangerous areas uh, uh, with uh, possibilities of tsunamis and earthquakes uh, mostly in Asia you will definitely love this feature to warn you whenever there is a forecast with some um, dangerous weather and you can also use the FM radio, this comes with the radio and this is the PTT walkie talkie service so you can use uh, the mobile frequency to just talk with uh, your colleagues on the construction site or if you're doing something very secure and you want to have a secure connection this is a very very good option the ZTT. Unfortunately it can't be turned off since it's system application. The display on the device is uh, one of the better ones I've seen on a rugged phone. It's full HD, 1080p IPS display. It's absolutely great for sunlight visibility. I was definitely able to read anything during the day in good sunlight conditions. The speaker on the device is uh, not the best one I think. It's okay, it's sound enough, but the, the quality of the sound is just not amazing. 
and this phone this come with Google Assistant integrated. Okay, Google. Find me a cab. I found a few places within 7.5 kilometers. Okay, Google. What can you do? Here are some things to try. You can say things like, is the light on in the kitchen? Or set an alarm. To see more, just swipe the options on your screen. Now a bit more about the battery life. This does come with a normal and sports mode, but beware when you're running on sports mode, the battery will not last last you as long as it is on the balanced mode. You will get around 45 hours of screen on time with uh, some heavy gaming and lots of videos from YouTube. But uh, I do recommend you keeping it on balanced mode to get much better battery life. The phone does take around two and a half hours to fully charge from the charger. The benchmarks, as you can see, are quite on power with the Snapdragon 625. Uh, and any mid-range phone in that price category. This is a very, very fast phone and very good for gaming as well as I'll show you in a minute. And I was amazed at the storage on this device. It's very, very fast and it does show when loading games and switching between apps because the phone does that very, very good and without any issues. The fingerprint scanner is uh, very accurate, but it's not the fastest one. The LED on the device is on the top left corner and it can be customized as you see. This is running Android 7 with the July security patch in it. Uh, and now let's take a look uh, at uh, actual performance. Yes, I'm not one of those YouTubers who tell you how performance is great uh, without showing it to you. This is me actually using the phone, showing you how you open, how it fast it opens apps, uh, how quickly it switches between them with multitasking, um, Google Maps, anything. I'll show you even split screen multitasking so you can definitely know what to expect in terms of performance. This is a very fast phone. Um, it may, be, well, may well be the fastest rigged phone available on the market today if you're not counting the samsung s7 s8 active it's a very snappy phone very good uh, daily driver when it comes to speed and performance and then we'll check on gaming uh, afterwards uh, which i'm pretty sure you'll be very pleased because the uniform armor 2 currently runs uh, the heaviest games on the android market without any issues at all and the graphics are very lovely on this device the mali t880 here with the helio p25 is clocked higher than all the other standard versions I've tested uh, and gaming performance is definitely on par with the Snapdragon 625. So this is uh, an awesome phone to use for gaming as well as daily driver navigation. Um, the Uniform Armor 2 really excels in performance where other phones fail to do so.
after we covered the, uh, all the important things, now we've come to the most important part for some of you, the camera quality. Um, this is, uh, it says it's a 16 megapixel sensor, I beg to differ, I think it's more like 8 or 13 in my opinion, but that doesn't really matter uh, if uh, you know your smartphone and you know that the megapixel count is definitely, it has nothing to do with the picture quality. And uh, the camera on this device is uh, much better than the BV8000 Pro and uh, perhaps on power even a little bit better than the Okito K10,000 Pro. So this, as far as rigged phones go uh, from China, this is one of the better camera phones, but that, that doesn't mean that the camera is fantastic, is great or anything like that. So, uh, it's not on par with uh, even Xiaomi Redmi Note 4, 4X, uh, and definitely not as good as the Mi 5X, which are in this price category. Um, it's a very, very capable camera phone. The shutter speed is very fast. You do have a manual mode, which, which I recommend using if you want to get a better um, photo. And it does have a weird bug uh, when you take some photos and look at them through the gallery. They appear super oversaturated, but when you put them up on the zoom, they are fine. And when you put them on the PC, they're fine. So don't worry if you have this phone and you see these uh, oversaturated photos, they do not look like that. Uh, when they viewed on the PC. These are actual photos taken from the phone. As you can see, the camera does suffer from overexposure when there's too much uh, sunlight in the background, as do most phones in this price category. But uh, when there's lighting conditions are favorable, when there's some shadow or there's not very bright outside, the camera produces excellent images uh, for a rugged phone, that is. And on par with many, many phones this price. And this is uh, some low light shots, uh, some food shots, as I know. Most of you love to take snaps on your food. You can see there's plenty of details in those photos. The camera shutter speed is very, very fast. Uh, and since this is this really is an f2.0 aperture with 1.12 micron pixel size, uh, it, this offer better low light performance than most Chinese devices at this price, but just don't go expecting, as I said, very, very good cameras. This is a capable camera phone. And as you can see later on, the video is also very good but it's uh, not great if i have to um compare it with something that maybe the camera is as good as the redmi 4x uh, um but maybe on par with it um, it does offer very fast shutter speed uh, which is something very very good um, i've put on a lot of samples for you because i really want you to to see that this device has a capable camera but uh, um, it does take some getting used to when to get a good shot for instance i'd recommend you uh, focusing on not the brightest lit spots on the picture you want to take since this will overexpose the image but focus on the color ones especially on the dark colors and you'll get a very very good shot even in indoors uh, artificial light conditions as well uh, i've talked so much about the camera because i really want you to know that this is an okay camera phone and especially the front camera is absolutely amazing this is the by far the best front camera i've seen on a rugged phone even those low light selfies like those elevator selfies and uh, you know subway selfies look very good on this device this is without a flash because it doesn't have a flash on it uh, um, and you can see the selfies look very 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 good on the device uh, the front camera and the back camera are capable of shooting 1080p video which is uh, quite nice especially from the front camera the main camera's video is uh, is a bit uh, shaky when you're walking but that is to be expected within this price point it does not feature optical image stabilization at all uh, the only problem with the video is that it's uh, practically unusable in low light because the camera starts to lag quite a bit. This could be fixed with a software update, but uh, as uh, it stands right now, this is the software version it's running on. And here are the video quality, so you can check the samples. Here, um, I was amazed again, uh, the noise casting with the microphone works very well and the audio in the video is far, far better than most Chinese devices, uh, even at $250. Uh, um, and when you're standing still, the video quality in good light is very, very good, in my opinion. Uh, but when you're walking, uh, it is a bit shaky. Not as shaky as some cheaper devices, but still shaky because of the no stabilization. But as you can see, the camera adequately compensates with the lights in this price category, considering this is a rugged phone and it's waterproof and it's great for gaming, has great performance as well. But um, the low light performance of the camera in video really does suck. As you can see, this is what you get in low light videos. But um, the, the front camera more than compensates for it. The front camera Here video is absolutely camera, great for vlogging. Armor 2. Look at this, the Robocop of all phones, but not like the old Robocop, really chunky and, you know, impenetrable. But more sleek, light and modern device where you can use 
as a waterproof phone with capable cameras. So there you have it, the Ulefone Armor 2, the best built, rugged phone at this price with the best cameras if you're looking for a Chinese phone, especially the front camera is absolutely amazing on this thing, it's very fast, it's very good for gaming as well, the video quality is okay, the screen brightness is very good, so, um, the only concern I can tell and I've told in the review is that the battery life I think it could be a little bit better, um, they could release a soft uh, update to fix that um, and the video quality in low line, but even as it stands, the Ulefone Armor 2 is a very very good purchase for anyone who's looking for a very tough waterproof phone that can be used for gaming and camera as well. This has been Stephen Fox, uh, thank you for watching my video review of the Ulefone Armor 2. Give the video a thumbs up if you like it, subscribe to my channel and uh, if you really want to help me share my videos in your social medias, tell your friends about my channel, let them come here for an honest opinion on the phone. Stop watching those paid reviewers like Mr. Who's the Boss who just have a good crew that has great production value but don't care what you think and just want to sell you a phone. Stick around.